everyone, this is Matt show again from Intro Stats, and we're continuing our discussion about how to analyze two categorical data sets. So, so far we've looked at marginal percentages and joint percentages, and now we're going to get into something called conditional percentages. And if you're really trying to determine if two categorical data sets are related or not, it's these conditional percentages that are the most important. These are the ones that we really dig into to see how much of a relationship there is. So in the percentages we've looked at so far, the grand total was always the total. But now we're going to get into the case where we want to compare groups. So we're going to look at situations where the total is not the grand total anymore. Okay? So you're basically in a conditional percentage, what you're usually doing is you're trying to compare the same percentage, so the same variable for the percentage, but you're going to compare it from different groups. So that's a good way to sort of think about it. So um, let's take a look at this first example. What percentage of Twitter students have a tattoo? Right? Now this gets kind of complicated. So the one thing to remember what we said was the word of or out of tells you the total. In these la the last percentages we were looking at, it always said of all the students. So that means we have to use the grand total. But if they said of the Twitter students, now it's telling me something very specific. I only want to look at the Twitter group. So I'm calculating a percentage from the Twitter group. And one of the things you really want to identify, that's what we call the condition. So out of, or whatever comes after of, is sort of your total, that's your condition, that's the total and the amount need to come from that group. So one of the key things that I like to do is I like to circle the row or column that has that condition. So since we're dealing with uh, Twitter, and it said of the Twitter students, in my mind at least, you don't have to do this physically, but you can, I'm kind of circling the Twitter students. Now the Twitter students might be a row or it might be a column. In our case it was a row. But in other words, this percentage that we're going to calculate only comes from the Twitter students. So that means you only use the numbers that are in that row or column that your condition came from. In our case it's a row. Okay, so a good kind of uh, easy way to deal with conditional percentages is circle the row or column that has your condition, your of, out of. Okay, so the formula really is you want the total, because we're talking about Twitter students only, we're not using the grand total, we want to use the total for Twitter. So the total for Twitter is 29, so that's going to be my total. But what's the amount? Well, I want the amount that have a tattoo, but in the Twitter group. So really, that's the ones that uh, both prefer Twitter and have a tattoo. In other words, the intersecting cell, where Twitter and tattoo meet. In other words, it's that number in the Twitter row. Remember I said use only the numbers that are in that row that you circled. So we got 8 out of 29 is going to be my percentage for percentage of Twitter students that have a tattoo. Uh, have a tattoo. So in our case, 8 divided by 29 in my calculator, I get 0 0.275862 and it just keeps going. Remember we're rounding to the third decimal place in proportions. This is again called a proportion. So we're rounding the 5. So I look to the right of it, it's an 8. So I'm going to round up. Remember if it's 0 through 4, you round down. 5 through 9, you round up. So since the 8 is uh, greater than um, 5 or greater, we're going to round up. That means we're adding 1 to our decimal place, so our, our adding 1 to the 5. So we get 0 0.276 is our approximate proportion. So again, that's the proportion. If I multiply by 100 or move the decimal two places to the right, I get 27.6%. So 27.6% of the Twitter students have a tattoo. Now the key thing in conditional percentages is you want to compare that to some another group. The comparison of conditional percentages really tells us how much of a relationship there is. So I'm going to compare the Twitter students to the, face, uh, to the Facebook students. Okay, so we'll look at this, for, keep this percentage in mind, but I'm going to compare it to another group. But I want to use the same exact variable for the percentage. In other words, I want to compare percentage of tattoo to percentage of tattoo. Since, and just do that for different groups. 
So you don't want to compare percentage of tattoo to percentage of no tattoo because those are different things. All right, so let's look at the second example. What percentage of Facebook students have a tattoo? Now again, when you read that, is, is the condition that they have a tattoo or is the condition that they're Facebook? Remember, out of is your total. That's the condition. Out of Facebook students. That's the group they want us to focus on. And the, the percentage I'm calculating in the variable is the tattoo, but that's not the condition. The condition is that they like Facebook. So again, I'm going to want to think about going back to my table. I'm only going to be using Facebook students. So where are the Facebook students? It's either in a row or a column. Sometimes it's a column, sometimes it's a row. In our case, it's actually a row. It's the first row. These are the Facebook students. All of these numbers are describing Facebook students. So again, if I'm restricting myself to only the Facebook group, I want to go ahead and use only numbers in that row there, this row. So we're looking for the amount that have a tattoo out of the total. Well, the amount that have a tattoo in that row is 19 and the total is 75. Okay, so um, in the formula it would be the amount that, of people that prefer Facebook and have a tattoo, so the intersecting cell where Facebook and tattoo meet, out of the total for the condition, total of for Facebook, which was the 75. Alright, so 19 divided by 75 gives us 0 0.253333 and Rounding that to the third decimal place, we get 0.253, or 25.3%. Now here's where the interesting part comes in. This is now starting to tell me something about the relationship. So in my mind, I'm thinking, does, is having a tattoo related to what social media you like? A lot of it determines on how close these percentages are. They're both... The, they're both percentages of having a tattoo, but they come from different groups. The question you want to ask in your mind is, does it matter what group uh, they came from? If the percentages are about the same or very close, then it doesn't seem to matter what group they're in. I get the same percentage all the time. That tells me not related or not associated. But if the percentages are very different, that's going to tell me there may be a relationship or an association. Okay, we sometimes call this the relationship principle. So if the conditional percentages are very close, now it has to be the same variable. Okay, again, I can't compare percentage of tattoo to percentage of not tattoo. That's never going to be close. Um, so the, it's always the same variable, percent of tattoo, that we compared, but we did it from different groups. If those were close, then it doesn't matter what group I'm in, and those categories are not related. But if the conditional percentages come out significantly different, then maybe it does matter what group I'm in. In other words, the categorical variable that's deciding the group, does, it does somehow play a role. Now remember, just because you say something's related doesn't give you the right to say that one causes the other. Remember, um, relationships, uh, association, correlation, that does not equal causation, right? So you can't say that their type of social media causes them to get a tattoo. That's not how this works. But there is some kind of, may, maybe a general relationship here. So let's look at the percentages again. Twitter for tattoo was 27.6%. Facebook was 25.3%. To me, those look kind of close, right? The closer those get, the more it seems to not matter the group. So liking Twitter or Facebook didn't seem to matter. We still got about the same percentage that had a tattoo. So the closer the percentages get, the more you're going to kind of lean on the not related or not associated side. So this kind of looks pretty close. So again, I'm going to say that having a tattoo is probably not related to liking Facebook or Twitter. Okay? Now, I know what you're saying. Well, how close is close enough? How close is not close? Well, that's also why this is not the best way to do this. Uh, well, that's where we really need a p-value and, and a hypothesis test that's going to help us with this. And we'll get into that uh, in our next uh, section on um, dealing with the uh, categorical association test, which is basically a hypothesis test of a contingency table.
But this is the idea behind the test, so having this idea in your head is actually a really good way to think about it. Now let's look at another one. What percentage of Snapchat students have a tattoo? So now I want Snapchat. So again, of Snapchat students, it didn't say of tattoo, right? Then I would have, I would have only to look at the tattoo students. This is asking for out of the Snapchat students, what percentage have a tattoo? So again, be very careful. The of tells you the total or the condition. So the condition is Snapchat. The percentage that I'm finding is tattoo. So where is Snapchat? Snapchat is, looks like this row right here. So I'm going to circle it. There's Snapchat. And I'm only going to use numbers in that row or column. In this case, it's a row. So the amount that had a tattoo was 11 divided by the total for that row, which was 71. So for Snapchat, we had 11 out of 71 had a tattoo. Well, that's actually quite a bit less. If you notice, the proportion is 0.155 or 15.5%. So if I was comparing Snapchat to Twitter, for example, right? Twitter, we found, was 27.6% of people that have, uh, like Twitter, had a tattoo. Well, only 15.5% of Snapchat has a tattoo. Now, these are starting to look different. And I know what you're thinking. Well, how different is different enough? Right now, just sort of make, a, make your own call on that. We could actually calculate something called a percent of increase. If you guys remember when we did percent of increase, you could calculate a percent of increase. But really, this is going to get to the point where we want to use the hypothesis test. The p-value and the test statistic and the hypothesis test take into account all of the conditional percentages, and they're much more accurate than me trying to just judge with my eyes how close are these. But in general, this looks pretty, a little bit different, right? They don't look super close. So that's telling me that maybe the, the, the social media does somehow related to having a tattoo. So since these are different, it does matter what group they're in. Seems like the Snapchat is a much higher percentage of tattoo than Twitter. So having a tattoo is probably related to liking Twitter or Snapchat. So if I compare Twitter to Snapchat, this seems like they are, the, they are related to tattoo, but if I compare Twitter to Facebook, these look pretty close, so maybe not, not related. So just remember, in conditional percentages, uh, the closer they are,